Hi everyone, so today I wanted to share with you a couple of accessories that I think will help you if you've been thinking about getting into vlogging or doing any kind of videography with your cameras. So full disclosure, these were sent to me in exchange for a review, but before I uh, accept any products like that, I, I usually make sure that they're good, right? I read all the reviews online and, and see that they're done well. Because uh, I don't want to review a product that I think is going to be bad just from the get-go. And then two, I, I always want to make sure that it's a product that uh, some of my viewers might benefit from. Uh, and a lot of times they're products that I've always wanted to begin with if I didn't have them already. So I'm going to be showing you three items to be exact. And uh, we'll just start with this first because this is something that actually I had long before they sent this to me. And I've been using this professionally in my own work. And uh, what I like about it, it's very, very well made. Uh, you know, it's a solid all metal construction and it's the design is very, very simple. Uh, basically, you just have these two ball heads on the end and then you have these two plates that you turn this wing net to tighten up onto the ball heads and that secures everything in place. It's not complicated at all. So there's less points of failure, <laughs> right? And uh, it also has some other advantages because you have a little uh, thumb screw right here on both ends that makes it easier to attach devices and I'll explain why that's important. Uh, and then it has another trick up its sleeve which I'll share with you uh, at the after I go through these other things. But um, you know essentially you just loosen it here and then these things go full uh, you know 180 this way or 360 this way. Uh, just just what you'd expect from a device like this and uh, you know just to give you a comparison to something that I used before is uh, one of these this is also one of these like miniature uh, articulating magic arm things right and I bought this this costs about half as much as the one from Anderson here but I bought this first uh, but I hesitated a little before I bought it, but I ended up buying it because, like I said, it was about half the price. But what, what gave me concern was some of the reviews on this, this device and all of them in this price range. Is, uh, you know, I saw comments like, you know, this thing busted on me the first day I used it or after a week, you know, and the, the quality and the build quality is very poor. And after having it in my hands, I can kind of see where they were going or why that might happen because this, this item has so many points of failure on it and the metal itself is very thin uh, almost everywhere on it. I mean, it feels solid in the hand. I mean, it's never failed on me, right? But I'm very careful with it. Uh, but it does have a lot of points of failure. And what I mean by that is like, you have these two ball joints here, so they have gears and springs inside of them, and then you have the ball joints here and here, which have additional uh, like tensioning springs or uh, screws built in. And uh, it's all controlled by this single knob right here that tightens the entire unit. And, you know, all the metal here has to rotate, so this actually rotates, I don't know if you can see that or not, this actually rotates all the way around right here, right? And then of course, this has to rotate this way. And then, you know, the, uh, the ball head itself has to rotate all the way around and then it'll do 90 degrees as well. And like I said, it's all tightened with this one mechanism here. So <clears throat> I can see why you know, if there's no quality control and uh, the thinness of the metal all the way around, uh, that this could fail or fall apart over time. Whereas something like this is, is such a simple design that uh, it's not going to fail. There's just no points of failure on this, on this uh, device. Now, when it comes to actually using it, it also has a significant advantage over this. So let, let's say you don't have a cheap one, you have a very expensive one of these. This still has some advantages uh, in use. And what I mean is, is mainly because of this thumb wheel to attach things. So with this, if I want to attach it to this arm and if I have this mount 
uh, arm mounted onto a rig or a cage or something, to put the monitor on, I have to put it on and turn it manually like this. So that means I have to make sure all the cables are unattached and uh, sometimes this can be a little awkward depending on the position that you have this in, especially when taking it off. And this is a small monitor. You can put bigger monitors on that are heavier, etc., and it'd be even a little more awkward. So what I have to do is I have to loosen the entire uh, articulating arm so that everything is loose so that I can just turn it. And this is how I normally mount it is I make sure everything's loose first and then I twist and screw this on so I can do that quickly and then I have to tighten it and then uh, mount it here so there's a couple extra steps involved to mount this securely and then once it's on you're okay you can move this anywhere you want pretty easily but it's a little bit extra work versus See, look at me, I have to, I have to loosen two places, but I'm going to just do it manually. With this one, I can have this mounted to my cage or rig. I don't have to loosen this. Once I have it in the position that I want, I tighten it down, and then all I have to do is attach the monitor, right? Like so, just with my thumb. Just like that, and I'm good to go. So it's just the little things, right, in your workflow and just making things easier when you're out in the field. Now I mentioned this has a, one trick up its sleeve and it's something that they didn't uh, describe on their product information page. And that is that right here in the uh, wing nut, there's two three, uh, quarter 20 to 3 8 thread adapters. And you know, if you, if you have a rig, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I can unscrew these out of the uh, wing nut. So I have some extra uh, quarter 20 to 3 8 inch thread adapters. But, you know, what's, what's the big deal? You know, you have these laying around everywhere, right? But it's convenient to have it in the wing nut, right? Again, workflow issue, convenience. But you can loosen this, this uh, you can loosen this contraption and take the uh, ball heads out like so and they both come out I'm just gonna take one out but they both come out and use this onto your rig so because a lot of rigs they use the quarter 20 screws right and there's there's a there's a 3 inch thread right in here so if you have 3 inch in threads on your rig you don't need the the adapter obviously but I can screw this right into here, like so. And then, on whatever rig that I have, uh, you know, I have a simple rig. This is actually for my gimbal, but I use it, I actually use it for vlogging sometimes. So you have these male to male quarter 20 threads. Again, if you have a rig, you know all about this already. But I can screw this right onto that just like that and what's the big deal well it's the same same thing with the other that i had the problem with the other device if i didn't attach this i would have to turn the monitor to mount it to the rig and i may not get it in the position that i want but with this i can just use my finger and thumb and screw this on like so and just get it to the exact position that i want now the other thing they sent me with this little monitor mount and the idea of this is to be very small and lightweight for you know small setups like on my EM10 Mark II. Now the other day when I went vlogging I almost attached this with this uh, small monitor when I went out vlogging. I decided not to just for the sake of keeping things simple but with a lot of cameras you know they don't have a fully articulating screen and you don't want to buy just a whole nother camera or change systems altogether just just because of that one thing sometimes all you need is just just a monitor and this has the same thumb wheel here uh, so that once I have it attached to the camera I can just screw the uh, monitor directly on like so and now I can tilt the monitor forward so when I'm vlogging this way 
I can get a clear angle to the monitor. Or if I'm working, say maybe I'm doing some product photography or macro shots, I can tilt the monitor forward this way and work with it, which, you know, an external monitor is always brighter and cleaner than the uh, on-camera monitor. And usually I have additional features and et cetera, but this, this is nice, you know, just being able to flip this. And it's a one-hand operation because the alternative is what I did before getting this thing was I used a ball head. And that's the problem with a lot of these small thumb ball heads. They're a little finicky. But it serves the same purpose, but this is a little bit heavier and a little bit taller which is not a big deal, because th these things are only like $10, right? This is closer to $25 or $30. This is uh, it's a little bit pricey, you would think, right, for what it is. But it's, it's about the workflow, right? Because if I want to change the position of this monitor, I can't just simply move it. I have to loosen this, and you can see the monitor just, just drops, right? So actually, it actually becomes a, a two-handed operation where I have to hold the monitor, position it to where I want, then tighten it. And if I want to move it again, I have to loosen the uh, ball head, move the monitor where I want, and then tighten it again. So again, it's about, it's about your workflow in the field. This just makes it 10 times easier just being able to do it with one hand while you're holding the camera with the other hand. And then the, and then the last thing I'll show you, just as a comparison in size, I'm going to show you three different ball heads that I've bought in the past together with this one they sent me. But as you can see, right, this one is a lot smaller and a lot, it's actually a lot lighter. It's actually about 20 grams lighter than the smallest ball head that I have. Uh, so it keeps, it keeps the overall rig for vlogging as light as possible. And then on the bottom, uh, there's a quarter 20 screw. So again, if I wanted to mount this onto my rig, instead of directly onto the camera hot shoe, for example, if I'm using one of those heavy duty Ninja Inferno things, right? I can just mount it to my rig like this and the monitor on top. So uh, it's very versatile as well. Now the last thing they sent me was an HDMI cable. And they call this their small, lightweight, soft, flexible HDMI cable. And it's uh, got all the latest wiring, supposedly, so it can go up to 4K, no problem. Uh, but this is not cheap. This is like a $30 cable versus, you know, I usually buy these, uh, these in pairs for like $20. These are about $10 each, these HDMI cables. So why would you buy a cable like this uh, when they both effectively do the same thing? Well, this is designed specifically, uh, other than just being lightweight, but the flexibility is very important, particularly uh, with gimbal work, right? Because what will happen is, is you'll plug this small micro HDMI into your camera, then you'll plug this somewhere else into your monitor that's in the rig setup for your gimbal. And then as the gimbal's moving around, back and forth and around 360, this being small, lightweight, and flexible will not put any tension onto the HDMI port that's in our cameras because, you know, people talk about how those break all the time. I've never broken one, thank God, but this, this helps mitigate any tension or even disconnect in some cases. Like if the gimbal twists real fast and if there's any tension on the cable, it could disconnect the... Uh, the uh, cable from the camera itself. So let me show you what I mean. So when I hold this cable up, it's, it's just like a, a piece of string almost, right? And I'm gonna rotate this between my fingers and you can see how it pretty much just stays hanging down just by its own weight, right, from gravity. But if I do the same thing with your standard like El Cheapo cable that you buy, and let me straighten it out first so there's no kinks in it. But it's still, it's still holding its form, right? Because it's, it's kind of thick. And then if I try to rotate this, look, at, look how much it raises up as I rotate it. All of that tension will either pull the cable out of the camera 
break the HDMI camera's jack itself, the micro HDMI uh, uh, port, or it's going to put tension on the gimbal itself so that when the when the gimbal's moving around, it could potentially, you know, mess with the uh, the smoothness of the gimbal operation. But at the very least, it puts extra tension on your gimbal motors, which are very sensitive. The most I can say about this, I, it's hard for me to recommend this uh, for just vlogging and video work. And, and you know, for gimbal work, yeah, that, that makes sense because it does exactly what it's designed to do is to be soft and flexible. Uh, but I've only had this about a month. And really the, the main thing with cables are how long do they last, right? Because now, I, like I said, I've been using this pretty regular for about a month, but not on a gimbal or drone or anything. Uh, pretty much stationary on a rig or on my desk. And, you know, so it, it remains to be seen how good this cable really is over time. But I can tell, all I can say right now is that uh, it does what it's, it's supposed to do. It's what it's designed to do. Now, a year from now, if somebody asks me what HDMI cables do I recommend, uh, and it, I might say, don't get this because it died on me after two months, right? Or I might say, get this. I've been using this pretty regular for over a year and it's been fine, you know? Um, I just don't know, so I can't, I can't talk to the, uh, speak to the longevity of this. But it's, it seems to be made well enough. I, I don't know why it would fail otherwise, but uh, like I said, it, it does what it's designed to do. So I'm going to have links down below to the exact products that I've shown you here. They'll either be direct links to the manufacturer or they might be the uh, my Amazon affiliate links. Uh, but either way, it's important that you get the exact products that I've shown you here because there's so many products on Amazon and they look exactly the same. But then when you get them in, they're not. They're either cheaper build quality or, uh, you know, they have some other issues. They don't work exactly the way I've shown you here. So uh, one case in point is like this Anderson monitor mount. They have a patent pending on this. So you're not going to be able to get this uh, exact product from anyone else. And as always, I appreciate you guys watching. And uh, if you have any questions about any of these products, uh, just let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have.